At Dupe World in New York City, this is Big Data Week. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is the Cube, our flagship program. Go out, go out through the events and extract the signal from the noise. And I'm here with the special guests who are actually running this conference at Dunville and Alistair Kroll. Again, a fabulous event. We are proud at Silicon Angle to be in our third year covering Hadoop World. And we've covered all the stratas from the beginning launch, uh, when you guys launched the conference, which was uh, a bold move at the time because you kind of blended together a lot of things. So welcome to theCUBE, one, and let's talk about what's happening here in New York, guys. So uh, give us the quick update. I know you're really busy, so we want to get right to it. Go ahead. We got off to a great start this morning with the keynotes after a fun uh, day of tutorials and sessions yesterday. I think really this, this audience has just swelled massively. Our venue was packed, we're really happy. There's a lot of energy, um, and there's a sense that big data is really something, right? Not just hype, but we're putting a lot of the building blocks underneath it too. Yeah, I think I you know any conference you see, the first couple of years are what is this thing, and the next couple of years are why should I care, and now we've kind of moved into so how do I use it, and and it's that you know people are starting to run into integration issues. They're trying to find real world applications that aren't just sort of making people click on ads more. Um, we're realizing that this is. Big data is fascinating because it's where humans touch technology, and that's where there are a whole bunch of sort of messy ethical issues, but also lots of potential to fix healthcare and finance and civil rights and all these other amazing topics. You know, yeah, obviously Silicon Angle when we started, with the whole thing was computer science meets social science. When you guys started Strata, there was a lot. It was a bold move at the time because it was kind of outside the norm of the normal conferences in the tech business. Yeah, but I mean, to some extent, that's what conferences are supposed to do. We're supposed to anticipate the curve just enough to kind of you know, g get ahead of it and bring people together because you're, you're skating, to, to borrow a Canadian sporting analogy, you're skating to where the puck's going to be, right? Yeah. And if the puck is going to be, uh, it's fairly easy to see how this stuff has gone up through the networking infrastructure stacks and then through the sort of cloud and platform stacks and now you're up to the, the content and the people stack and that's where we're seeing an amazing explosion of stuff because suddenly this is relevant to, you know, everyone's a technologist today. I heard a great quote that 24 months ago, people were terrified of their phone, now they're terrified of being without their phone. And that's like a sea change in, in the usage. You had mentioned on one of the keynotes, I saw your introduction to, I think it was Tim from Digital Reason, you said Mark Andreessen wrote the seminal op-ed on the Wall Street Journal, software's eating the world, and if that's the case, data is its food. Could you just talk about that? Because that's a, that's a great way to look at the data side, because data is important, it's exploding, uh, but explain more about what you mean by that. Well, I think w on the one side, um, garbage in, garbage out, right? If you eat a lot of junk food, you're going to produce bad results. And we don't recognize the issues. I, I remember presenting last year, um, when Athens wanted to tax pools, um, there's, you pay a pool tax if you want to tax in Athens, if you want a pool in Athens. So about two years ago, 324 people filed their taxes on a pool. Someone went on Google Earth, found out there's over 16,000 pools in, in Athens, and no joking aside, sales of green tarpaulins were up because people wanted to cover their pools because they knew they were using Google Earth. That's a garbage form of data that leads to garbage outcomes, right? Yeah. And the downfall of the Greek economy may not be due to pools, <laughs> but it's certainly a factor. The second part is that um, if we're not careful about our information diet, if we're not careful about what we consume, how we consume it, and then how we put it to work, um, this stuff can be used for very bad things as well as very good things. It can be used for huge violations of privacy, uh, invasions of civil rights, all the stuff you read about in the sort of alarmist worlds. But if we feed it and nourish it and give it good stuff, it can make us healthy, it can make us wise. This, so it really is all about understanding that software is going to be how the world is run, but that data is going to be whether it runs well or poorly. So guys, I want to ask you a question on that thread because really you're talking about people being a, a big part of the equation and that's coming out of some of the keynotes is yeah, there's a lot of technology, these tools and platforms are becoming better and, and, and Ed has a prop there, we want to get to that in a second, but I talk about the people side of it because you now have instrumentation, you have things sensing data, you have uh, machine data, you have people data, you have phone data, all the data, tsunami, yeah, it's all great, all instruction, it's happening. However, people are still a big part of it. Can you guys comment on your insights around the role of people in this data explosion and this big data explosion? Well, I think it's all about people. You know, those of us who actually spend too much time in IT conferences could be forgiven for thinking it's about software vendors and, and what people buy and so on. But all of this, the only reason machines exist is in service of people, right? And the real potential of big data is when it reaches out directly into our world. Thus far, you know, it's not got that far, but now we carry the mobile phone, doing with us. So we both need to understand what data tells us about people, but as people we need to understand what data is telling us. And so one of the things we really focus on is design, user experience, and the whole interaction of a person with the data is as important as any analysis. That's how we really understand how to make decisions. And relative to data, obviously, um, 
using data is going to be uh, an interesting way to do it. So like one of the things we were just at the IBM conference this past week, we were joking before we get on about the red eye we were on, but you know, IBM is an established player, totally endorsed, and their entire messaging around information management right. has now shifted to big data. So, you know, Big Blue's putting a big check on the big data revolution, but decision making is another important part, and analytics play a big part of that. What do you, uh, Alistair, what are you seeing in terms of the problems that are being solved out there that yet are, are have not been completely checked off in terms of data. Yeah, so I think, uh, to Ted's point about people, um, we're looking at the track for, for Strata Santa Clara 2013 in February, please come. Um, and uh, Ed made a very good observation, which is that we have these tracks about interfaces and user design and so on. And he said, look, we should just call it design. And there's a great quote, I don't remember who it's from, that talks about design is helping people arrive at an outcome you want. And that's really a great understanding about design because all this data is just to help you get to that outcome. And I think we're now realizing that this data, I mean, just like we used to call it cloud computing, we thought it was new, it's actually just another tool in the IT toolbox. It's just computing, right? Cloud storage, we're just going to call that storage. Big data, we're just going to call that data. What's changing is that an organization used to make decisions based on guesses, and whoever could guess best was right. And now an organization's going to make decisions based on asking good questions and analyzing stuff. And the organizations that will win are the ones that can turn that information into an outcome. And so that's a problem of organizational structure, it's a problem of decision theory, it's a problem of cultural change in a company. Those are all human problems. And so many of the analytics that we see today that just say, here's the right course of action, need to be accompanied by sort of coaches that say, you're getting closer to that action. These are the people who are resisting that outcome. How do you, you know, what are the obstacles in your way between you and that new outcome? And that's where I think, you know, programming the organization to go after the outcome the data has suggested is a completely unresolved problem and to translate that into some you know, industry trends for, for next year, that means we'll need decision systems that can explain why they made decisions. If we're going to assist people running their businesses, we'll need to let them know why they're making decisions. Black box algorithms are not going to work. You need to understand why you made a decision. The second thing is we'll need, and you'll see this coming up, great metadata support, right? Talked about the garbage in, garbage out. You've got to trace things through the system. You've got to understand how they're transformed, what decisions were made, and that's what's going to come back down into product and into databases, support for this explaining uh, decisions and kind of tracking the metadata as data flows through our I want to get to simplicity. I know you guys are tight and we got a tight schedule. I want to get to the whole simplicity message, but first I want to get to your gadget there. Uh, you, have, right. uh, you have some props here. So tell us about what's going on at the show. I know that uh, I'll let you explain and set that up. Yeah, so I'm very excited because one of the things I wanted to do was to prove this. Can you hold it up a little right? bit? I can hold up the camera. So really prove the whole uh, data thing from soup to nuts, because we're talking about sensors in Strata and we're talking about data streaming off. So these little guys are Arduino uh, setups with wireless mesh networking, XBs. They've got temperature sensors, noise sensors, um, the PIR to see who's going by measures humidity. We've distributed 50 of them around the venue and we're tracking all the data, streaming up into the cloud. And then we have a team of data scientists analyzing this, mixing it up with photos. Um, we've got a stop motion camera um, and other things from around the venue. We have like formats. hotel data, like coffee consumption going into this too, yeah. <laughs> right? And it's a whole new heat map. Uh, uh, <laughs> data from the ac wireless <laughs> access points. So we're going to see what we can create because we want to do the whole data science thing from beginning to end while we're here. Yeah. Um, and so a bunch of people came together and formed a lab and seen them downstairs. Um, uh, and this is a great project, I'm very excited. And I think one of the things you'll see is that at a conference like this, it's easy to accompany a call for proposals to speak with a call for data. So we could easily take that data set and say, hey, everybody mine that, come back to us next year and present what you yeah, learned. Let's right? talk about that while we're here. Talk about what's next. So you said skating through where the puck is going to be. Mm -hmm. So tell us, where will the puck be on next Strata as you do your Strata programs, which is now, I noticed in a lot of different verticals, you guys are expanding, there's a lot of demand. So share with yeah. the audience what you guys are looking for for those so, so I think uh, Ed mentioned metadata. Do you want to expand on that a little? Well, I think that's going to be very useful. In, you know, the beyond Hadoop, I think, is a really important thing to consider. Hadoop is obviously a core engine, but and it's what's enabled real transformation. But it's not the whole shooting match by a long way. So we're looking. Meaning, at Hadoop doesn't mean big data. There's other things involved. Hadoop is not big data. We already know from you know announcements like Cloudera's this morning that interactive access to the data is crucial, and furthermore that. Um, there's going to be the need for s to be able to systems that cope with streaming data is going to be very important next year. But I think there are other things beside that that um, we're looking to address. Alice has already mentioned the design. 
but we're also taking the fact that enterprises are now doing big data for real into account. We kicked off a, what we call a bridge to big data day uh, this, this, this week, and we're going to build on that. And that's really the plan for CIOs and people in an IT organization to develop a strategy, to walk through that strategy, um, and to, at the end of the day, also discover valid enterprise data architectures. So that's new to Strata as it actually starts to happen in the enterprise rather than just in experimental areas. And I think we're also going to see, um, as I mentioned earlier, when you move from the what, it is, what is it to why should I care to how do I use it, you see the rise of sort of case studies and best practices, which weren't necessarily there. So yesterday we had people like EMI and Beyond the Rack and others talking about how they're actually using big data. So probably more case studies, more concrete examples. The other thing, and, and this should be obvious from the things sitting on the desk here, is uh, this, uh, if there's an umbrella term for it, the Internet of Things. Because every device we carry is both a display surface and a data collector, right? Um, the uh, DARPA had a project a few years ago for a spike that you threw in the ground that would do heat sensing and motion sensing and noise sensing and it would broadcast things by mesh network and each spike was only a paltry $10,000, right? The iPhone is DARPA's wet dream and we carry these things around and we voluntarily share our locations. So we've basically created... That's a cute quote right there. The iPhone is DARPA's wet I, dream. I'm it's a true. walking bumper sticker. Yeah. So, so the reality <laughs> is that we've created this world where you can just harvest all this data very, very easily. And I think that model of feeding the machine is huge. We're going to put a lot of information in there and we're going to consume it in new ways. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Congratulations on a great program. Ed and Alistair, the co-chairs of Strata. It's blowing up, it's global. Congratulations, uh, we love being here. Thanks for your insight. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break. Thanks. Thanks.